Hey, this is Ryan from So Is It Any Good. Welcome to So Is It Any Good's movie cast. Um, this is episode four. As you can see in front of us, we are doing a Halloween episode. We're going to talk scary movies, horror things, and see how it goes. Um, so I'm your host, Ryan. I'm Jared. I'm Scott. And I'm Mick. Let's get this thing on the road. All right, so, you know, I want to talk about different things, you know, different horror things, um, you know, and I wanted to know what scared you first, like kind of out of any movie that you saw. It doesn't have to be a horror movie. It can be anything, you know, what, you know, comes back into your brain as being the scariest part of your childhood in a cinematic kind of way. <laughs> it's a weird question. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mick, do you want to go first? Yeah, you... sure. I've kind of got two that come top of mind. For a moment that scared me, it was the start of Ghostbusters was one of the... Uh, the, 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 yeah. the ghost in the library yeah, yeah. that just that was full on scary for me but as a as the film got went on I kind of you got into that mm -hmm. I didn't find it even as a kid that much of a scary movie but um, Poltergeist was the first one that that really got to me and I remember I was really young when I watched it I can't remember what year it came out what scared you about that like just, what particularly I think just the whole the concept of this unseen the unseen thing like not knowing what's taking this girl away right. but just yeah the, the idea of it just yeah being gone in the sounds and just you know the static on the tv turned into a scary thing for me yeah, like yeah, so yeah. as a kid if, if the tv channel changed to static first thing i thought of was you know the, the ghosts in the tv are going <laughs> to come for me and i just remember really distinctly um grabbing hold of dad's leg because i was so small <laughs> and as he's walking around the house to i'm holding on i'm to picturing it being, you at this age yeah, right now like right, your age right now <laughs> That's not a good look, but yeah, I remember it being. Dad. It, it took a while to to get that one out of my head, and I still remember it as being yeah the first sort of movie that really scared the shit out of me. You know? oh, right, and also clowns. Uh, yeah, that yeah. clown scene in that movie. That's oh a, that's a, yeah, bloody screw Under that. the bed. You know, the, with the oh, I can't remember it. The toy. Yeah, the yeah, toy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The start yeah, of the I movie. It sets it up at the start of the movie, kind of like foreshadowing it that he's yeah. kind of scared of it, and then there's one scene towards the end of it where he actually gets terrified, which is just, just unbelievable. Yeah. On um, the flip if you haven't seen Poltergeist, that one scene in the beginning, that's all worth it. On the yeah. flip side, is there anything that you thought, you know, it was scary but it was cool when you first saw the film? Um, you can <clears throat> it was, I mean, yeah, the whole, it was one of my favourite yeah, films. Yeah. Like, the, I loved to be scared. And yep. then, um, I mean, I just, the, the whole concept was cool, I thought. Um, I can't think of anything that would stick out just to be one cool thing from it, but the overall style of it and just... Um, from then on, I think that kind of set me off. It became a thing going down to the VHS store to find scary movies. And then we, we you know, we were talking about this from, from friends the other day. We'd kind of look at uh, the VHS covers and totally just judge the movie off the VHS Absolutely. cover and go to the horror se section and see what we could get to, to scare us, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think as the Poltergeist movies went down, I went along, sorry, they kind of got like crappier and crappier. Like, because the first movie, you know, is her touching the television. You're like, holy shit, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. The second movie is her in a corner of a, a, I don't know why I remember all these, I just do, um, a corner of the VHS cover on a telephone. And then the third movie is just like her looking up at a giant building. And it's kind of like, right. is the building scary? Like, <laughs> I don't think I saw the third one. Um, and I can't the third remember one is the rubbish. second one. The, the other two don't matter. The second one's pretty it's, good. It has the original cast, um, which is Especially nice, the villain in that's um, That creepy dude, Oh, my right? God, terrifying. Kane, uh, yeah, Kane, yeah. Kane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just this really old dude. But he's like, he looks like, in the nicest way possible, he looks like a can cancer patient. Like, he's gaunt as hell, but he's like 90. Um, <laughs> I like how that's the nicest way possible. <laughs> well, no, I know. I, I, I meant nothing against cancer. Right, okay, people, sure. People that sure. have cancer and yeah, yeah. gaunt, gaunt. People but, with cancer can talk. <laughs> See some um, in the comments. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to like that. Anyway, yeah, terrifying. That's just that guy. One particular guy is terrifying in the movie. Um, what about you, Scott? Uh, not a horror film, but I think the first thing that really kind of creeped me out was Return to Oz, a film full of horrific moments as a child. The wheelers. But the wheelers, man. Yeah, they really creeped me out as a kid. I remember, and I think it's, I've watched it since, and I think the film's really kind of neat, and it's in that weird phase where Disney were doing kind of really dark and creepy stuff. Like and Disney? Yeah. Disney produced Return Holy to Oz. Holy shit. I didn't know that. Walter Murch directed, I think. Who's Walter yeah. Murch? He Sorry. did, uh... He was the... Excuse the, my ignorance. He was, he's <laughs> he's an editor. editor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Famous right. for that. Yeah, so... Yeah, weird history behind that, kind of that the making of that film, and it's so bizarrely non-Disney. I don't know what they were trying to get with it. But anyway, the wheelers themselves are kind of these British dudes that are wearing this makeup, and then they, the hats that they drop down are kind of these creepy, just creepy look to them. And I think the whole film, I think that what's 
really creepy about it is that as a kid, you kind of go into it thinking, oh, it's cool, Wizard of Oz sequel, and it's just this dark, yeah. apocalyptic almost version of it, which I think is really cool now, but not what I was expecting as a child. It couldn't be more different. No, but I appreciate it now even more so because of that. I think it's kind of cool to go to this place that was such ha- so happy and joyful and the yellow brick roads all gone and yeah, the yeah. are all I did dead. find the original, now that you mention it, the original Wizard of Oz scary. The black and white stuff at the start and then yeah, the yeah, lollipop kill. Sorry? The lollipop kill? <laughs> we <laughs> represent oh, right. yeah, yeah. the um, lollipop. Oh, yeah. But just the, the concept of the when the house was flying and people are out the window, oh, yeah. like, that was fucking and freaky. And the neighbor, the neighbor lady, the... Rocking in the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it's just, I know it's a blue screen or maybe a green screen, probably a blue screen. But I think the special effects in that one particular scene, like, I was in awe of that when I was a kid. I just remember, yeah. like, how are they doing that? Yeah. Like, in the guys on the rowboat. Yeah, yeah, like, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was one. What about you, Jared? Uh, the first one that I remember being truly, truly scared by, I don't know why I was watching it. <laughs> I was like, here we go. Yeah. Uh, I was Debbie pro- does Dallas. No, no sorry. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> My formative years. <laughs> uh, it was Child's Play. Uh, yeah. Parents thought it was a kid's movie. No, no, no. Toys. It was uh, a, a neighbor who was um, like, he was probably like two or three years older than me. So he was watching it with a bunch of his, his friends and mm-hmm. I, d- I happened to come around. And then um, it scared me so much. I made it about 20 minutes into it and then completely left the house and yeah, went I'm, back to my house and I, like just <laughs> shut myself in a room for a while I, and <laughs> I have the exact same I think I made 10 minutes I uh, made it to the title sequence. it is terrifying and it's, yeah screw you director of that film for <laughs> yeah, ruining childhood yeah. Um, yeah that movie destroyed me it pretty much destroyed horror for most of my childhood yeah. I didn't bother kind of going back to that genre because of that stupid film yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Really, it kind of amazed me how much it meant. I don't know what about it. I think there's something about the innocence of toys and whatnot. And yeah. And as a practical effects nerd now, I think it's kind of neat how they made the doll and stuff, but it creeps the shit out of me still. So <laughs> don't look at it very often. Um, yeah, so mine is, mine is weird. I don't actually remember when I saw this, but I remember it just like it stuck with me. It still sticks with you today as being one of those things that I actually really like about horror films. And it's kind of like that... Um, what the fuck did I just see kind of thing? Like, it's not like, you know, jump scares doesn't really scare me. Like the suspenseful build and then a jump scare doesn't really scare me. It's the bit where, you know, someone might be walking along and then you kind of just like do a quick flash through the flash through the cinema or the flash through the room, sorry. And then you go back and they're like, holy fuck, that was there the whole time. And so this one is Twin Peaks. Um, the end of Twin Peaks where you find out who the serial killer is or the like killer the is. the TV show or the fire walk with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Oh, I don't know. That's I haven't seen it since then. So I think I'm pretty sure it's the the pilot episode of Twin Peaks. Right. Okay. But don't quote me on that because I could be wrong and I haven't seen it since then. I have and, not seen t- um, Twin Peaks. Every single person in those movies is also in the TV show. So it's like that, that um, what's that guy's name? Carl McLaughlin. Yeah, that's I'm him. pretty sure they won in one film and it was after the show was done. Yeah. Maybe that's it then. I don't know. Anyway, point being... Whatever it was, I've only seen it once mm-hmm. and it stuck with me and I refuse to watch it again because it terrified me and I don't want to see it again. Like it's, I'm trying to get it out of my mind. Are you excited about doing <laughs> a new season? Um, no, I don't remember the show at all. Right, I remember okay. it's like kind of like you know someone's daughter. Yeah. It was the woman from Big Love and she's in a few other things. Marsha. Yeah. What's her name? Marsha Gay Harden? Probably. No. Probably. The older lady. Oh, um, yeah. And anyway. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 no. Yeah. I know you're talking about. Sorry, no. Um, yeah, she's... She, at the start of the film, she runs into her daughter's room and freaks out because she's not in there. So she's like, you know, rushes in, the door opens up and the whole camera swings around the room. And, you know, that's the scene at the start of the movie. You don't see anything. But then it cuts back to that last scene in the end of the TV show or movie. Um, sorry, I don't remember. Um, it's probably the movie. We're the movie experts, is. guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's one, as I said, it's one I've seen when I was a kid and I'm trying to block it out of my mind. Anyway, um, yeah, and she... Cuts back to it later, and there's a guy hiding in the corner of the room, and Ooh. she just like freaks out, and I just I can't get that guy's face out of my mind, and I never have. Who was it? Um, now I only know him from another movie because I know he's in that movie, and he, when I saw his face, I was like, "Fuck you! I know who I know who you are. I don't know your name, is it? I don't want to find out." But he's in Last Man Standing. He's the the secondary bad guy in that. Um, not Bruce Willis, and not the main bad dude. Who I think I is Andy remember. Garcia. Um, Last sorry. Man Standing with yeah Bruce it's a great Bruce Willis movie highly recommend okay. um, can't tell you who directs it but it's basically Bruce Willis is in a western um, and he is just like passing through town on this. 
Yeah, he, pass, he kind of passes through town and he's a, kind of like a gunman for hire. Or keep in mind, I haven't seen this probably since like 2001. So he's um, kind of like a gunman no, for yeah. hire. And then yeah, I get you. Um, the different fractions of the gangs want yeah, him yeah. and they pay him different sorts of money and kind of plays between the, all of them and then he kills off everyone. No, Spoilers, I, do, I do remember it's it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, what you just said about Twin Peaks reminded me of that whole urban myth about three men and a baby. You know about that, right? Yeah, the, which is... The ghost outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what it is now? Well, it, I, I remember reading something. Some It was just someone, like, obviously... It was Ted Danson, stand, like, a cutout standee of Ted Danson oh, in a top hat. Oh, was it? Well, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> and, okay. like, you couldn't tell because the VHS quality is so crappy or right, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Probably the same thing for the beat or but whatever they're playing when on When you said it pans around the room, that thing's there. Not, I never noticed it. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. Ever noticed I remember that coming out on um, Hey, Hey, It's Saturday. And I don't know what that chick was. It was like um, uh, yeah. the Nixon tape. Yeah, whatever Levinia, it was. Uh, oh, yeah, Lavinia. Yeah, yeah Lavinia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Her, she did Nixon tapes and whatever, like, she would, like, movie mistakes. Yeah, like the and, Stormtrooper. Um, that was the first time I saw the Stormtrooper. He there's so many things hope. I learned yeah, from yeah. That, movie, that show. I was like, holy shit, I love movies because of <laughs> Lavinia <Yeah>. Nixon. <laughs> don't know who she is. I don't know what she's doing these days, but probably, like, some sort she's of kid probably, show. She's probably still around. Channel yeah. 9. Channel 9 somewhere. But going back, I guess, round, is that, are we aware of the poltergeist? Uh, the, the, uh, not urban legends, the, the actual deaths. Well, right, yeah, she died of... A lot of people. So there was yeah, a lot so, of things. Like yeah, yeah. it's more than just um. I, I, had I knew it was the the, the but young she actress. She didn't die till the third film. film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I guess two weeks prior to the premiere of the original film, the the actress that plays the sister in the film was murdered by her boyfriend. I guess at the time. Yeah. Um, at the front of her house. Yeah, oh, that's so creepy. Yeah. 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 Was it out front of the house? It was. It, it was no. Yeah. It was. It was like long story short because I read up on these things. It was pretty much from my understanding is that someone had called the police for her to be kind of like removed from the boyfriend's house because he started going crazy. I think because um, she you know, started getting fame from Poltergeist coming out and he was worried about her cheating on him, cheating on her, her cheating on him, sorry, and um, asked her to come outside um, you know, and talk to her and he got so aggravated that he ended up strangling her to death. I don't think, well, I mean, how can you not strangle someone? How can you strangle, strangle someone to death and not mean it? But I don't think he intentionally yeah. did it. I think yeah. it was just kind of like was, the rage in his it wasn't pants intended, or whatever. It was the, yeah. What happened with the second film? Um, so it seems other things that movie. That's the the skeletons in the yeah. In the, is that, in is the that pool? true though? Well, apparently. Um, what about I when, when they dig up the pool? The, so yeah, apparently, apparently they... it was too expensive to make real skeleton uh, fake skeletons, so they just dug up skeletons and threw them in there. What? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. the real That's mystery it. of the film is who directed it. Yeah, I like I like to think about that. So it's directed by Toby Hooper, um, but it be, like apparently him and Spielberg had such clashes on the film that it could actually be directed by um, Steven Spielberg. And there's heaps of things in the movie. I remember I got you a book for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's heaps of things in the movie that's. I actually thought it was. I thought he was credited. No, no, so he, he's, he's a producer. exec producer. I have not seen it in so from what so I, long. What I under- all-time faves. Yeah, what I understand is that he had like, competing scripts kind of at the same time as making Temple of Doom, Poltergeist kind of came around and I don't think he was interested in doing like a dark kind of film twice in a row. So I guess he kind of handed it off to Toby Hooper to kind of pick up. But he was so involved that I remember reading an interview with... Zelda Rubenstein, is that the... Yeah, yep, yep. This house is clean, yeah. lady. Um, <laughs> that she said... I, I read a review, uh, interview and she said, no, Spielberg directed me every day that I was on set. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I, I, I that. think, That's yeah, crazy. the book that you're talking about, you got for me for my birthday many years ago, but it... <laughs> mathematics... So leading on from that, what do you think is probably the scariest film you've ever seen? You know, even childhood now... What's the best scary film you've probably ever seen? So, because I'm sure you know a lot of these people watching this night right now, it's going to come out on a Sunday. They're going to have some time for the night before Halloween. What do you recommend as your scariest film? Mm, uh, the Exorcist yeah, springs. The Exorcist and The Omen, old school. But um, I remember being scared by it as a kid and then thinking, oh, I, I had a job where I was um, quality controlling, quality checking tapes for the movie channel many years ago. And The Exorcist came, came in like a remastered print I thought, oh, I'll watch this one. And then even, oh, I was in my 20s at the time and it still just scared the crap out of me. Yeah, like, yeah. The stuff that really gets to me is that the, the, it's like it's almost the idea that it's the supernatural thing, but it sort of feels like it could happen. Like wh- whether or not the religious connotations of it are one thing, but the, the idea of someone sort of, you know, having the physicality of some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just, I found it really freaky and, and probably... It just stands up to me. It still stood up. Like, it was old when I first saw it. And yeah. then revisiting it, um, I just thought it still totally stands up. I'm still scared the piss out of it. You know, <laughs> I think most people would agree with you because yeah. I don't think there's a best horror film list that doesn't have it on it. But yeah, also, yeah. I mean, you Even talk about... Top films, like top yeah, 100 yeah, films yeah. that's on there. But you yeah. talk about the realism potentially is that, I mean, that 
the idea of exorcism has been revisited so many times throughout mm. film that you know it's it's obviously had some effect on people. And I don't know whether it's a case of people trying to recreate the magic of the exorcist or or whatnot, but obviously that's a topic that um, definitely seems to scare moviegoers. I think it's just a topic that scares people in general. So then it manifests itself in movies. Yeah. So mm. you talk about demonic possession and like that touches on all of the religious stuff and yeah. all of the religious guilt that people have yeah. and then am I going to hell if I do this and blah, blah, blah. And then like that manifesting itself in everyday situations, like a little boy who is adopted, like that is terrifying. For the omen. The omen. The omen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. Reagan's a girl yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and she has a mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but also the omen. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, both of those films, the music, just the tone of the way that they're shot, and it's particularly the omen, thinking back, I revisited that recently actually and just how the bleak sort of weather and that the weather plays a, a sort of character and it makes it just that much more eerie, the music, the, just the way that it's shot and this sort of muted colour palette that it's got, it just all, when I watched it young, I wasn't thinking of that, but now that I'm into that stuff, I, I really sort of reanalyse it. And one scene that sort of fell apart was the dogs in the cemetery. I really did look like it was on a sound stage to me yep. watching it now, but I never remembered that the first time I saw it. I just thought, it, you know, I just took it all for, yeah, for yeah. real. But it, yeah, amazingly scary film too. Just when, when that realisation comes through in The Omen, when the photos are getting developed and you can see the little the foreshadowing literally with the shadows in the, in the photos yeah. and then the the scene where the um the woman jumps off the roof and Damn hangs man. herself this is all for you yeah, <laughs> yeah that I was i think that's just... where the, like that film turns almost like it's almost like yeah. like he kind of gets away of being almost like a family film like they take in this new <clears throat> kid he's not really terrifying until that point like he kind of just like all right no I'm not doing anything like that kid's fucked <laughs> just up the whole the whole S- the way that that as a set piece played out like it wasn't just a hanging it was then the bang and then yeah. see it through the glass yeah, and, yeah, 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 and then yeah. all the it kids could see it it was just like holy shit on so many levels it was his birthday party wasn't it yeah oh. yeah. yeah. so they had Terrible. the carousels going and all that sort of stuff and yeah freaky imagine being that rich you could have carousels like just at your house no worries mm. just gonna he's order a what, some carousels he's a senator or ambassador or something yeah something along yeah, those yeah, lines yeah. Damien eventually becomes Sam Neill yeah. from memory in like Damien 4. Oh, that's three, right. Final yeah, conflict. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. <laughs> Number three. The, yeah. I think I think the fourth one kind of ends up like next Karate Kid and it changes, like goes to a girl. It kind of like re- reboot the, the franchise. They did a fourth one? Yeah. Before like, the remake? Like, I think it's called The Omen, The Awakening or something right. along those lines. The touchstone is Karate Kid. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> where I couldn't do it. They re- <laughs> couldn't, it's couldn't the beginning. Be... Karate Kid is like, for me, the beginning of the female reboots. Right. Just no one remembers it. They yeah. did it with her. Like, yeah. Um, Hillary Swank. 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 Yeah. Swank. 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 Two time Swank. Oscar winner. Yeah, what has she done now? I think, what is it, Valentine's Day was the last movie? No, New Year's Eve. No, surely she's been in something. But like, recent. you know, like high, high profile. Yeah. Place like, I Love You. I think that was, I think that was yeah. before. The Core Man. So good. The core. Aaron Eckhart. Yeah. Just killing it. horrible. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, good to know. It's it's one of those uh, disaster um, Armageddon yeah. ripoffs, but instead of space, oh the they, core, yeah, they, they oh, went, in, they went into the, the middle of the. No, I, was, I, thought, yeah. I was thinking Heidi, uh, not Heidi, um, Heidi Berry, <laughs> yeah, Heidi Berry. <laughs> That's like the the Caucasian version yeah. of uh, I, Hallie, I guess is a white. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, Scott, what about you? Uh, for me, it's going to be John Carpenter double feature. So I think the thing. I think it's absolutely wonderful film, scary, has great effects, suspenseful. And I think those, I'm not really someone who's big into like the torture porn or any kind of, the supernaturally sci-fi stuff I think is great, but I think the film does such a wonderful job with the suspense and that blood testing scene I think is phenomenal. And I remember the very first time I ever saw the film, I walked in on it and it was the... um, where they're operating on the guy and then his chest opened up <laughs> and uh, people got their arms ripped off. It was wonderful, wonderful film. And I think that's a film that holds up. I don't care how many remakes or prequels or whatever they do. I don't think Have anything. Have you seen gets... a prequel? No, I kind of avoided it on okay. purpose. Like it's, 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 it's pretty good. Like it's, it's, um, unnecessary. It is. Un- it's completely unnecessary. Yeah. But they try to make a new franchise out yeah. of it. And I think they did pretty well. Like it's, it's the, um, the Soviet the team Norwegian or whatever. Guys. The Norwegian team. Sorry. Um, yeah, but why and, is you know, Mary, Win- uh, Mary Elizabeth well, Winston? They explain that. They explain that. They, you know, bring in 
You know, kind of like they do in Jurassic Park. Norwegian. Unnecessary. Kind of like they do in Jurassic Park. You know, they're a team over there, but they need extra people that with more intelligent things to work out what. I was, was all going keen on. for that film, and then I realized they took away all the practical effects and replaced it with CG. And I kind of, I feel like there's, I think there's such a, a cool coolness about that film because everything, like I have no idea how they did half that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Rob Bottin, good job. He's in a hideaway. Yeah. He just can't find that guy anymore. I so what I read, I'm pretty sure Stan Winston assisted on that film but right. it was yeah Robert team for the most of it so the other one I think and I'm not a huge slasher guy but I think the original Halloween That's is true. incredibly well done oh uh, it's incredible it's so good I think the Carpenter score is wonderful I think the idea of just the shape and I think there's so I same thing again I love that there's you know absolutely nothing about Michael Myers really he's just the guy who escapes the, the loony bin yeah and I think that's the, the, the reboot, went the wrong. reboot, yeah, went I wrong. I don't care else. about even, even John Carpenter. Said yeah, it was shit I just the there's day, so much. There's so, it's such a simplistic yeah, thing, and there's some great kills in there. Yeah, and like um, and the, the closet sequence, and where he just stabs that guy into the wall. I yeah, think yeah. it's all it's kind of the archetype for twenty years of slasher movies. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, original and kind of beat. You know? No, I agree. I think, uh, but it's you know, getting remade again. So. Yeah, um, unnecessary. Um, Jared, what about you? Um, so I've got. There's a couple different sort of eras of horror, I guess. Uh, Rosemary's Baby is great psychological horror. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, I, I hate that movie. Oh, really? It. It just, it's such a long <laughs> film. Like, it yeah, just... but it's the, the, like the like same sort of thing as uh, Omen and Exorcist. Um, Exorcist. Yeah. Like, you, you can totally see that happening, like apart from the devil baby obviously but like it plays on everything that yeah. a parent fears about the child yeah. um and then um i'm not really a, a like a slasher movie guy so i sort of tend towards the the ghost kind of subsection yep. of horror so the others was amazing i i don't normally like nicole kidman films but <laughs> She's just kind of bland to me, but it goes like even. her blandness actually Spoilers. played really well in that movie, and the the reveal is really good. Um, I hesitate to just ruin that. <laughs> Maybe we can just block that. Yeah. it's two thousand one. <laughs> you haven't seen it at this point. Yeah, I'm exactly. Solo yeah. Fifteen years old. Come on. Um, and I hesitate to say it, but I, I enjoyed the first Saw movie. Right. Uh, I don't like the torture porn at all, but I found the first Saw movie was very clever okay. in, in the way that it um, that it told a story. I didn't particularly like all of the the sort of set pieces of it, but I thought that the whole thing it, it was it was cleverly done. Interesting note about uh, Rosemary's Baby that you just made me remember, and I can't remember if it's the director or the DP that. Uh, saw this. Have you heard about how he framed? There's a shot in the film where she's sitting on the bed on the telephone, and you can see her legs and the telephone resting on her on her knee, but you can't see her face while she's talking on the phone. And apparently, at that point in the film, in the cinemas, it was just like where sort of 100 people would all <laughs> lean in their chairs to kind of peer around the door. It was shot through a doorway with just her, and it was just like one of those moments that he said. You just sort of knew you had everyone at that point. Yeah. <laughs> All these heads <laughs> going on. That's an absolute win. Yeah, that's amazing. Great. Interesting. Um, Ryan? Yeah, well, you know, I got already got bloody feedback from you guys that you think this is terrible, but I'm going Insidious, which is James Wan film film that came out, I think, um, 2011, I'm going to say. James Wan, director of Saw. Director of Saw, your, mm. your man. Mm. Um, director of many films now. He's just hit... You know, Stardust with um, Stardust with um, Aquaman. Man. He's directing Aquaman, which yeah. is pretty cool. Well, he hit um, Pedro before that. With, yeah, with Fast, uh, and Fast and Furious. Yeah, <coughs> Fast Eight, Fast Seven, Fast Seven, whatever one it is. One with um, Paul Walker dies. Fast Twenty Three. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fast Seven. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, point being, yeah, Insidious, and the reason being is probably stems from, um, you know, what I said prior to what scared me first in my life, which was things you you think you haven't seen or you think you haven't seen and then you eventually gets revealed to you and you, it has been there the whole time or, you know, kind of questioning what the fuck did I just see? And in that film, um, there's a lot of it. Kind of like there's the jump scares are also that are in it are, um, you know, well-timed and they're, um, you know, the... the <clears throat> what am I thinking of? The suspense, the building and stuff like that is really well done. Like there's a scene in it where the demon of the movie, um, you know, is standing behind... The mum and kind of comes out of nowhere. I was standing behind the dad and the mum, or 
fucking one of the people see it and gets terrified and um, I have to explain the movie. Anyway, um, I might cut that bit out. Anyway, um, yeah, so the the bits that I do like in it, and there's, there's one sequence in it with um, Rose Byrne and she's traveling through a house and it's a single shot, um, you know, scene and she's walking through her, her house, you know, picking up things. She goes through the main hallway um, and then goes through one of the bedrooms, picks up clothes and then cuts through the laundry and drops off the clothes and continues going. But as she gets into the laundry, there's a little boy standing up in the corner, um, just looking into the wall. And it's kind of just one of those things you can like, if you weren't looking at it, you wouldn't have seen it because he doesn't move. He's just standing there like this, looking into the wall, like, you know, face head back to the mm. camera or whatever. And it was just like, holy fuck, what was that? And then it continues on and she makes her way through the living room, eventually goes outside. And then all of a sudden the record player starts playing and it's playing that, um, tiptoe through the tube. That song. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know why I can do that so well. Anyway, <laughs> you've been practicing. <laughs> I have a yeah. couple of theories. I like to. I like to sing to Ariel sometimes. Right. <laughs> just, 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 just yeah. that terrifying song. Yeah. Um, just, and Ariel refuses get, to watch it again. In the mood, um, Ariel, my wife. <laughs> oh God, no. That would like, <laughs> put out any kind of horror film, and she's like, I'm done. Especially ones that have supernatural feeling or um, you know exorcism or stuff like that, demonic possession. She's done. Like she can watch slasher films. For some reason she doesn't think that's kind of real, but you know you put a demonic possession or um, or you know insidious on, which is directly insidious. She refuses to watch any of the sequels. She's seen the first one and that was it. Like I'm not watching anymore. Um, but yeah, that film was probably my favorite. Um, yeah. So something else I wanted to talk about was you know all the big slash films that you know have come out in recent times you know Friday the Thirteenth, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween are all getting remade now again for okay. somewhat the second time, somewhat the third time, and um, you know I wanted to see who you guys thought would be cast in those films as you know if if not a teenager, you know um, who could come back or who could play the main villain. Mm. So do you have anything in mind? I mean oh, I'm happy to go first. Um, <laughs> um, so I was thinking, you know, Friday the Thirteenth. Um, oh, sorry, not Friday the Thirteenth. The Nightmare on Elm Street. I would bring back um, Robert England because I think that uh, you can do something along those lines where you can pretend that the last movie, the one with ja- um, James L. Jackie L. Jackie, Jackie L. L. <laughs> James L. Jones. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, Haley? Jackie L. Hurley. Haley? Um, Haley. Yeah, Haley. Yeah. Anyway, that guy. Um, you know, that could be a whole dream sequence that he's kind of made up, kind of thing, and bring it back. You know, is that being kind of like a dream and he's being the mastermind behind that um, whole thing? I don't know if that would work, but I'd just like to see Robert England back in the role because he made the role. He's the one that kind of... And yeah, and I think that's the biggest problem, right? Is that even when they did the remake, it was they didn't try and do anything original about it. It was no. just, let's... I mean, oh, they made it dark and gritty, whatever. But they didn't... The same kind of style, really. It wasn't anything like... It wasn't anything bizarrely different. It was all kind of the same. And it's like, well, you had such a good actor in that role why try and re yeah, yeah. better that like no, you kind of got a, a win there um and i think that is that's a series where you do have the ability to kind of do the ideas that you have but at the same time they already kind of did that with new nightmare and i feel like they've kind of True. taken that they've taken it as far as they can get into the meta that i i you'd have to come up with some completely new idea to kind of yeah. do anything original i think with that franchise yeah, it yeah. kind of surprised me they're trying to reboot it again when they they obviously tried to do it, and I, was it successful? Though it wasn't successful, but I, yeah. I kind of, I kind of enjoyed it. I think only because, um, you know, after the first movie, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, um, you know, it started getting a bit, you know, co- comedic Correct, in the way yeah. in the way he was killing people, and yeah. in the way um, Freddy Krueger was talking and Robert England was talking. Um, and you know, as it went, went went on, it got more and more ridiculous. Like, even like when he the- dies, there's a scene where. Um, uh, what's his name? Man, why is nothing is working in my brain right now? I can't think of his name. Kid from Clueless. Um, oh, Paul Rudd. No. Oh. <laughs> um, nerdy. Uh, he plays a skateboarder in Clueless. Oh, uh, Breckenmeyer. 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 That's him. He, he's in the, the the you know Freddy's Dead. I think yeah. it's the the fifth film or no sixth film, sixth film. And you know he dies by video game. He you know falls into a dream and falls into a video game and there's this whole sequence kind of like Mario where he's like book 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 yeah. jump along it's just ridiculous um, <laughs> but I feel like that's the trend for all kind of real horror horror stereotypes or characters I should say is yeah. that they kind of lose their they turn into they, a parody yeah correct so they, and that's the only way they can keep these franchises alive um, yeah yeah uh, Friday the 13th is probably I mean they didn't particularly do make Jason a comedic character but there's only once again only so much you can do with 
type of character that, that doesn't speak. Correct. He doesn't <laughs> speak. He just whacks people. Like, yeah. is that, that's, and I think horror has evolved in the last 20 or 30 years to kind of move away. They, they've had to be more creative with their slashes. And like the original Nightmare on Elm Street is incredibly creative because it, you compare that with something like Halloween is that, you know, going into dreams. And there's some fantastic deaths in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. The uh, Johnny Depp death is the, the fantastic. Yeah, it's it's absolutely wonderful. But yeah, they've, I think they've just got to do something completely out of the ordinary, completely different than what's come before it. Um, and I think... But it's hard to kind of keep that, that original, you know, what makes Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street. And I think, yeah. so to find that balance between new and keeping with the old, I think is very tough. And it surprised me that they're going to bother to try and do this again. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Anyone else got any ideas? Um, I, I will say that when I was thinking about this, I, I, I really dug what um, John Carroll Lynch did in um, the fifth season of American Horror Story. Right. He played that killer clown. Um, I haven't seen it, but I'm going to yeah, pretend that I have. He's he's terrifying. <laughs> um, and I think he would be a a different way to take Freddy Krueger. Because right. like Jackie or Haley or whatever his name was, was very close to the Robert England yeah. style of Freddy Krueger. Yeah, especially so, the first but movie. John Carroll Lynch is a massive guy. Right. So you make him an imposing figure to begin with and then yep. add all that other Freddy goodness onto it. And plus he's an awesome actor. So. I feel like if he went that route, you'd almost make him too much like the other two, you know, Michael Correct, Myers yeah. and Jason Voorhees. Yeah, yeah so I, was think, I was trying to rack my brains on this to think, I'm thinking, could we get someone who's just like built like a brick shit house? Because, you know, the original guy was more slight, but he was scary. Yeah. But then I'm like, it's the same. Yeah. I thought exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then it's, it's kind of scary enough with what he's got going on. And I think the one true thing that runs throughout that whole series is and that differentiates from everything else is the idea of someone killing you in your dreams and so i think if you keep that as a core concept but then kind of and having a killer whether it's freddy krueger or some kind of equivalent keeping going that kind of core sequence but you know you don't have to give him the razor i know these are things that make the franchise but that franchise already exists so yeah I don't know if you need the razor claws and the fedora and the striped jumper but, and all that but, kind of stuff. Then, I know, I know. But then why do you remake it? Well, yeah. exactly. <laughs> tell me. The remake the hey, Hollywood, please like, tell it's, us. It's <laughs> not like the horror genre out of all of them is is sort of needing ideas. If anything, like they're the only ones that are coming up original, with, yeah, yeah, with right. original yeah. stuff. Mm. It's all low budget. It's like it doesn't cost anything. So like and I think these, these um, like pillar horror... Um, properties that you're talking about, they'd be expensive to reboot now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I think there's a lot of like, as um, The Conjuring has kind of proved using real life stories in a way that, you know, that has The Conjuring 2 in particular. I quite like that movie. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, much, much more terrifying. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was yeah. unreal though. Just like knowing that that was a, you know, I don't know to the extent of how real it was. I watched a lot of the documentaries about it, but, you know, it was cool thinking that that actually might have all happened. Yeah. Um, you but, know, James Wan again. Yeah, and I think horror as I a... may have a hard-on for him. <laughs> so let's, let's not talk about that right now. But I think horror as a genre has survived, you know, for a long time. And, you know, it's been... You know, the, the, those slash films, the 80s, are, are long gone. And I think yeah. it's it's kept on yeah. without, you know, needing to reboot these characters and whatnot. We, you know, new characters have been created, new stories, new ideas. And what you're talking about with basing on our real life events is, you know, the current trend, but I'm sure the next trend will come along. I just don't see the need to kind of reboot these older franchises um, that have already been rebooted unsuccessfully. Yeah. Mm, right. And and then ran ran out the first time. Yeah, correct. Like, like ran through I think J- Jason ran through ten before it got Yeah, correct. Rebooted. And I think I think I think Freddy Krueger is so yeah, Robert Englund is so 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 much that character that it, you'll never replace him. Cool. So we'll leave it there. Um, if you want to check out more from us, head to soisanygood.com and make sure you hit the subscribe button on this video here and comment down below if you want to let us know anything we missed or anything we stuffed up because I'm sure as hell we missed up, oh, there's messed up some years, things in that. Sure, oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, cool. I'm Ryan and that's it from us. Beep, beep, beep.